so I was just sitting here watching another one of small time machine shops videos thinking man I should probably make a video because I haven't uploaded in a while but I don't really have anything interesting and then I realized I'm watching him sort through a bucket of wrenches so I should probably make a video on all the stuff that's been happening in the shop first big thing has been this cabinet right here it's now on my uh, workbench it used to be over there where the bolt bin is uh, why is this interesting well I have a couple more just a second move my drink out of the way I have a couple more cutting tools now that's all the horizontal stuff I already had but uh, I bought a couple of end mills um, I bought a whole lot of them Long reach, three quarter inch, big old half inch, not big half inch, but long half inch. Underneath just all sorts of half inch end mills, you know, aluminum, titanium, nitride coated, two flute, four flute, carbide, just loads of them. Five eighths and three quarter inch end mills. 7 8 inch cutting diameter, 3 quarter inch shank. Uh, the big roughers along with the tiny ones, little tiny end mills. I mean, not Stefan Gutes went are tiny, but small nonetheless. Little ones that I can now run because of the collet system I have. You know, the roughers. And these two, which don't have a home because there's no place for them. Yeah, this cabinet also stores all the hacksaw blades. And uh, another couple of new acquisitions for the shop. I got some bigger mics. I brought home a whole bunch of my mics from work. A lot of my equipment from work. Because uh, Adam from Small Time Machine Shop, guys watching, uh, gave me a mic set zero to four inch craftsman set a really nice one and i use it at work all the time that's my go-to daily mic set so i brought home all my assorted ones i have a set of er25 collets for the er25 collet holder that uh foxberg's fabric goblin sent me i bought those off of ebay i got the five to six inch mic along with a bunch of lock line for the kt um, and a four to five inch mic. Speaking of the K&T, I got a couple of big cutters for it. Uh, a good size six inch wide horizontal milling cutters, slab mills. It's taking a couple of test cuts, but it, this thing, it, it's a bit dull and this is a super tough material. This is forklift dyne. So even a 50 thou deep cut, the amount of force on the handle is tremendous. Um, I have to push the machine at 5 eighths inch a minute. And if I try to do it by hand, I physically cannot turn the handle. I'm a fairly strong person, but that it's a lot of force. And above the K&T and the lathe, I have new LED lights. I also have... You know, this one, this one, that one's above the hacksaw. Um, those are super nice. They all go to a junction box. They just get daisy chained together and go to that junction box that I put together the other day, which is super nice. Uh, it's really nice to have outlets right there. I don't think I have too many new tools that I haven't shown you guys. I did get a new lathe center and a new chuck for the lathe. Uh, I have the big boring head. One inch uh, shank boring head, uh, along with a little uh, half inch shank Flynn boring head. I need to get a 5 8 just so I got the full range. Um, of course, you know, the ER25 collet holder. And to use this collet holder, I made this guy. It's a bastard creation, it's ugly, and it needs refined, but it works. It's holds the 40 taper tools really nicely 
sometimes. And 50 taper tools. So if I want to take the end mill out of this guy, I have a good thing to hold it. So it's also tilts too when it wants to. So it's really nice. It's bolted onto the side of the K and T. It uses the uh, production T slot or the T slot for the dogs. Uh, it, I physically cannot use this portion of the T slot for the dogs because that's my stop that stops the lever no matter what. That's the end of travel. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this here. I'm definitely definitely going to clean it up. I don't think I'm going to keep it here though. Uh, I don't really like the positioning. It's handy, but if something falls, I don't want to rip out that T-slot by accident. So new shop vac and all this floor dry. I ripped up. I used to have rubber on the floor that was supposed to keep the oil from getting on the concrete but what happened was the oil just went underneath and it made an oil slick and it was disgusting and so now I ripped it up the other day and I put down a bunch of cat litter to soak up all the oil and I'm getting ready to vacuum it up and uh, another thing the metal shaper I have a motor for it now I'm going to be making a flat belt pulley I have I bought a switch and all that for it Got to mount all that. There's not a whole lot wrong with it at the moment. It just needs put together. Another project I've been working on is a new belt grinder welding table combination. It's a 2x72 grinder that is based off of just a single post. It makes it super easy to assemble, uh, super compact. I'm going to be getting a bigger drive wheel for it, 7 inch drive wheel, maybe a 5 inch drive wheel. Uh, I'm going to be making a table for it. I also want to get some contact wheels eventually, so that's why it's spaced out so much, is so I could put a big old contact wheel right there. I could have made it more compact and made it smaller, but that's good enough. The table itself, the grate, it's a quarter inch flat bar that I got from the scrapyard. It's like a catwalk grate. It's 20 by 30. It's super nice. It's all held up by a single post right there. It rolls around nicely. I'm going to be making some better storage for it. Speaking of better storage, I got like 20 feet of these shelving racks. They're in a giant pile outside. And I'm going to be using those for better storage. Another project is 223 inline 6. Uh, I bought another motor. I'm going to be honing it out. I don't think I'm going to film that project. I'm going to be re I'm going to be rebuilding two 223 inline sixes. I'm going to learn on this one and rebuild another because the block that is in my truck is the original block and I would like to keep the original block with the original truck but I still need a motor for when I'm you know rebuilding the original motor so that one is going to get rebuilt and go in so I need to get the flamethrower. My valve cover is covered in spiders. I don't know if you can see all of them. You can get the flame for through flamethrower. If my damn words would come out of my mouth correct. Oh. Too rich. There we go. Well, the spiders have perished. Hopefully all of them are gone now. I also have this shelf. I don't think I've shown it. It's mostly filled up with 
books, engine parts, and Greenfield tap and die set. Very nice shelf. Speaking of shelving, I made a new steel rack out of three inch C channel. Yeah, I know the shop is disgustingly cluttered, but this shelf was to hopefully mitigate a little bit of that, make it easier for me to access my steel, and also make it so I have a spot to put all of my automotive um, stuff, my clutch, my transmission rebuild kit, all the things that I'm storing until I can properly use them when I pull out my motor. Well, that's been a little bit of an update on the shop. Um, I honestly can't say when I'm going to get back to making more videos. To be completely honest, I my heart just simply hasn't been into making videos. I try, and I just quickly lose interest. So, I mean, I've tried to make update videos like this a couple of times, and, yeah, I just don't feel like it. Another thing I got is this giant slab mill. It's kind of neat. Two-inch bore, but somebody pressed in a bushing. I got a brooch of keyway in it. We do a lot of broaching at work. I'll take it to work. We'll broach it there. Or I'll get the shaper up and running and we'll use the metal shaper. With that being said, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see where all this goes. Uh, in the middle of the summer. Well, no, not the middle of the summer. In a month and a half, probably, I'm going to be going down to Oregon and buying about a uh, 1,000 pounds worth of gear cutters. Uh, just your regular single-tooth gear cutters, not hobs or anything, but that'll be fun. Uh, it'll definitely be a good test for the rebuilt motor, so... Until then, goodbye. Have a nice day. Sixteen degrees at six a.m. and she starts up without an issue. Just a couple pumps of the gas. She's fucking loyal. Fuck, we're being sick. Like, I haven't really done a whole lot of physical. Move the mill a little bit.